The Money Trades Economy Monday last week, we argued that the Fed would push back on this easing of financial conditions, and that's exactly what we've seen. We saw that from Neil Kashkari, we saw that from Mary Daly, we saw that on Sunday in a Wall Street Journal article from Michelle Bowman. But yet the equity market's been very resilient. Now we are seeing equity futures, NASDAQ futures, S&P futures opening a little bit softer on the open today. But last week, yeah, the momentum was to the upside, and we've seen the NASDAQ testing that January downtrend and closing up 1.9%. The VIX is eyeing 21%, and we've got the high yield credit spreads coming in 21 base, uh, 41 basis points into 428. Of course, this is coming on the back of a massive non-farm payrolls number, which caused yields to move up quite sharply. We saw two-year yields on Friday up 18 basis points into 322. Of course, we've got our eyes on those June uh, highs around 345. Uh, we look at the rates pricing in, in euro dollar or Fed funds futures, and we can see about 68 basis points being priced in for that September meeting. Uh, we can have a look at real rates. They moved up sharply. Twos are up 24 basis points on Friday. Obviously, a tightening of financial conditions there. And we look at the terminal rate, which is the March 2023 Fed funds contract, which is sitting at 364. Can this push above 4% in the week ahead? Of course, you know, this resilience that we're seeing in equity market will be very much in focus. Of course, the CPI number midweek is going to be the one that everyone's going to be focused on because of those rate dynamics. If rates are going up, perhaps we can see some downside coming through in equity markets. That inversion of the yield curve, of course, very good for the US dollar and when we're watching those flows very closely. The CPI number now, the market's expecting 8.7%. The fixing market, which has been pretty accurate at predicting inflation, is at 8.8%. I think we'd need to see something below 8.5% to, to really you know, cause dollar outflows and, and, and cause you know, you know, moves in rates. And of course, we're going to look at the components that go into that. But after that, uh, we get Evans, Kashgari and Danny speaking, and they'll give their views on what's happened with not just the, the non-farm payrolls, but of course, CPI numbers. On Friday, we've got University of Michigan numbers. They'll be coming out in terms of the survey, in terms of inflation expectations. There's a Mexican central bank meeting uh, later in the week where the market's expecting seven and a half, uh, uh, the rates to go up to 8.5%, 75 basis points there. China's CPI numbers. Uh, of course, we've got our eyes on Taiwan and China and their relationship. And in Australia, earnings ramp up with CBA very much in focus. And as you can see here, the daily chart of the Australian uh, market very much in consolidation mode. So another big week, trade it with Pepstone.